Hi guys, day 13 of Exodus, day 13 of Marian Consecration. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, because I did, I did videos, if you look on my channel, I did videos of Exodus 90 a little bit, but this is day 13 of Marian Consecration, consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary. There's a lot to unpack in this chapter, or in this reflection for the day, and I'm just going to read it straight up so you guys don't miss anything. So here we go. To be an instrument, rather, to be instruments. Again, St. Maximilian didn't just want to ask for graces from the Immaculata. He wanted to be the graces of the Immaculata. He didn't just want to do the will of the Immaculata. He wanted to be the will of the Immaculata. Wait, be the graces in the will of the Immaculata? Isn't this a bit too much? Not according to Colby's reasoning. He figured, well, if people can give in give themselves over to Satan to be possessed by him and to be his instruments of evil, why can't people give themselves over to God to be possessed by him and be his instruments of love? He further reasoned that more than anyone, the Immaculata is possessed by the Holy Spirit. Why not be possessed by her so as to be perfectly united to God's will? In other words, it wasn't enough for him just to be Mary's slave. As St. Louis de Montfort often put it, he wanted something deeper. He wanted to be an instrument in the hands of the Immaculata. To be an instrument in the hands of the Immaculata, this is the central idea to Colby's whole vision of Marian consecration. Thus, he writes it directly into his prayer of consecration. Let me be a fit instrument in your immaculate and merciful hands. To what purpose? The conversion of the entire world. Come on, Colby is getting a little carried away, right? I mean, what can one do? But this gets to his main point, his master strategy. His own piece wasn't the only part of his master plan. In fact, he wanted to raise up a whole army of fighting knights and soldiers who give themselves to be instruments in the grace-filled hands of the Immaculata. He wanted to build a Militia Immaculata, which he describes as follows. The Knights of the Immaculata seek to become ever more truly the property of the Immaculata to belong to her in an ever more perfect way and under every aspect without any exception. They wish to develop their understanding of what it means to belong to her so that they may enlighten, reinvigorate, and set on fire the souls living in their own environment and make them similar to themselves. They desire to conquer these souls for the Immaculata so that in return, or in their turn, they may belong to her without reserve and may in this manner win an even greater number of souls to her. May win the entire world, in fact, and do, do so in short, the shortest amount of time possible. What genius. Notice the brilliant logic that undergirds the Colby strategy. If we really love God, if we truly long to work for his kingdom, then we should find the quickest and easiest way to become saints and thereby return it to him. Now the quickest and easiest way to do so, as we learned from St. Louis de Montfort, is through Marian consecration, which is what we're preparing for right now. Let's go. Yet, Colby takes it further. He didn't just stop with himself. He didn't keep the great saint making secrets to himself. Look at it this way. What's better, one saint or two saints? A thousand saints or a million? Think of what a million saints fully consecrated to Mary could do. Imagine if Mary had a million instruments through whom she could fulfill the perfect will of God. It's an amazing thought. So Colby exclaims, teach others this way. Conquer more souls for the Immaculata. If this is the quickest, easiest way to become a saint, then it's also the quickest and easiest way to conquer the whole world for Christ. If only we teach others about it. So Colby says, let's get to work. Yes, let's begin by learning to live this consecration ourselves and then bring it to others. Okay, so the first things first. We need to learn to live this consecration to the Immaculata. We need to belong to her in an even more perfect way. How did we do this? Simple. 
we learn to love the Immaculata. How? By relying on her powerful intercession, experiencing her tender care, speaking to her from our hearts, letting ourselves be led by her, having recourse to her in all things, and trusting her completely. Yes, we should especially trust in the Immaculata and be happy in her. We should follow the example of Colby related to us by one of his religious brothers. When things were going well, he rejoiced with all his heart, with everything, and fervently thanked the Immaculata for the graces received through her intercession. When things went badly, he was still happy and used to say, Why should we be sad? Doesn't the Immaculata, our little mother, know everything that's going on? So tomorrow, we'll learn more about Colby's form of consecration to our little mother. Today, let's end by reflecting on his words. My dear, dear brothers, our dear little, little mother, the Immaculate Mary, can do anything for us. We are her children. Turn to her. She will overcome everything. Let's end in a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, living in Mary, prepare me to be a fit instrument in the hands of the Immaculata. St. Maximilian Colby, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you guys all have a great day, and know of my prayers for you. God bless you. Peace.